Hello, my name is Kelly and I've been an interviewer and a mentor with iTutor Group now for a little while. So I've decided to put together this video to help new consultants. So the idea of this is I'm going to do a complete walkthrough of what you can find in your iTutor Group teacher portal. Because I get lots of questions about where to find things um, and how to do different things in the portal. So the idea of this is to help answer some of those questions that new teachers do have. So when you follow the link that you're given when you first start you come to the login page so i'm just going to log in to show you what comes up initially the first page that comes up is one of the most important pages as it does give you access to a few different things um, we'll come back to this later first of all i'm just going to kind of walk you through the tabs at the top one of the more important things you'll want to notice is as up here in the right corner, you'll see the time. You do want to make sure that the time that is here matches your current time. So if you do need to change that, you'll see just below, you can change the time zone to whatever you need. Uh, do make sure you pay attention to whether you're in daylight savings or not, because that is quite important. If you do need to change it, there's a button at the top that just says change time zone, and it gives you the option to do so. Okay, first thing we're going to go to is announcements. Now, iTutor Group does send out emails from time to time with different announcements that are relevant to you, like different promotions or, you know, policy changes or, you know, whatever is going on, helpful information that you may need. Um, sometimes emails get lost in cyberspace, so do keep a check on your announcement tab. That's the first tab up here that you see me highlighting. And that has all of the recent emails and announcements that have went out. Um, so you can click on those to see what's going on at any given time. Okay, now the most important tab, I think at least, in the portal is the consultant tab. So there's a few things that you will find here. First one is your dashboard. So that's the very first thing you see under the consultant tab. When you go here, this tells you how many session hours you've taught towards your next raise. It also gives you your last 200 session average rating as well as your low ratings. So this tells you where you're at in progress toward your next pay raise, which is super important. So to get a pay raise, you do need to teach 1000 hours, keep your rating above 9.5, and have less than 3% of low ratings. And you are evaluated once a month and the date will always be here. Okay, um, so this is a good tracking point for you just to kind of see where you're at overall. Okay, aside from that, if you go to my sessions page, that will actually take you back to the very first page that we saw when we logged in. Um, so a couple things you can find here. Um, one, if you are looking to do referrals, that box is always at the top of this page there. You'll see me highlighting that one. If you just click refer now, I'll just point you to this because it's very useful to know. Uh, you will see that you can find your code here, so it's always a four digit code. And there's also an option for you to copy your code and link so that you can send it to your friends, post it on Facebook, whatever you want to do. Um, and you'll also see down below, you can see that people are tracked down here for you to see where they're at in the process. Um, you can see your successful and your unsuccessful applicants all down there. Um, so just a little bit of tidbit of information for you if you do want to invite your family and friends along to teach with you. Okay, back to the My Sessions page that we were just on. So we had just went to the Refer Now. Um, now, this is quite important. This part down here that I've just highlighted is where you will actually access your classes. So you will go here, if you click that blinking button at the bottom there, enter My Session page, you'll get a little pop-up. Not gonna lie, I have never read this in my entire time teaching for iTutor Group. Um, but just click understand and that'll take you forward to the next step. Okay, so what this page shows you is what you have scheduled. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop forward because I don't have anything booked in for the next few days just because I'm off. But we will go ahead to next weekend when my next hours are booked. Um, so when you have hours open, they will show up as booked and you will see them in 30 minute time increments. Um, so these are my fixed hours that I have with iTutor Group. So 
right now they are just open and I do not yet have a class scheduled. So that terminology can be confusing for new teachers, um, but booked and green just means that you have the time slot open. Um, what will happen when it is booked or when you actually do have a class in that time slot, it will actually change the yellow. So you'll see that yellow dot up there at the top and it'll say scheduled and you'll actually see over here on the left it'll change to a class title and a time and then when you click on that it'll actually have some information about your students so you'll see the actual name of the lesson below that you'll be able to see your student name you'll be able to access the material there'll be a button over here on the right hand side where you see me circling that'll say material and there'll be a little icon you click and that'll open up the material for you um, below where you have your student information you'll also be able to click that to see how old your student is um, you can see how many classes they've had with iTutor group and you can also click and see any recent feedback that's been given for them which may or may not help you to guide your lessons um, now we'll kind of tell you what these other dots up here at the top I know the writing is quite small um, the purple dot to be honest is not relevant for most new teachers um, this is only relevant for the demo team um, and to get on the demo team you do need to be invited um, so you'll see that if you do start teaching demos that will actually signify your demo classes the next one is a pink dot and it says start in session so what that means is it's essentially you are in that class. So it will go pink about 10 minutes before class and you'll have the option to enter the classroom uh, about 10 minutes before. There'll be a start button that comes up here just at the bottom of the black box. It'll say start session. Click that and it will actually open your classroom in another window. Um, there are some other links that appear there. So start session will be over here on the left side of the black box. There'll be some other, I believe they're pink, boxes as well that say mirror link. Um, they are completely irrelevant. Don't bother clicking them. They're not useful and they don't really mean anything for you. I have never had to use them. Um, but yes, so the dot will stay pink as long as it is your session time or as long as you're meant to be in that classroom. Um, the next one is once your class is over, so once you've ended the class, left the classroom, you will see a pink and gray dot. That means that you have not yet completed your progress report. So once you do finish your class, where you had that start session button, that will actually change to progress report. And you just need to click that. That'll open up the progress report for that class where you can actually fill in and complete the information that you need to for your student. Um, in the progress report at the top, you'll see a place to fill in any feedback that you have about the actual lesson that you just taught. And at the bottom, you'll see blocks for each student that you had in the class. Um, if it's a kid's class, typically there's only one student. If it's an adult class, you could be doing it for up to six students. But you'll just need to rate the students in different areas, like excellent, good, fair, for things like reading, pronunciation. And then there's also a spot for you to type some feedback for each student as well. Once you've submitted that progress report, your dot will go to gray, meaning that you have completely finished that class. Um, the last one I'll let you know about, super important, is the red dot. Avoid the red dot. Red means that you have lost your class. Um, and typically that means either you have not shown up for a designated class time, or it can also mean that you have failed to sign in on time for your class. So do remember that you do need to be in your class three minutes prior to start time. So you do need to be careful with your time management. So if you do have back to back classes, for example, make sure you are wrapping up at the 25 minute mark so that you can get to your next class three minutes early. Um, that is a big point I see with new teachers um, getting switched out because they fail to get into class on time. Um, if you do have a class that is switched, I do urge you to contact the schedulers on Tutor Chat as soon as possible to let them know what's happened and to ask them to not remove your upcoming classes. If you do miss a class or get switched, they will remove the next 24 hours of classes from your schedule. Not as a punishment, but because simply they don't know why you've missed that class and they don't know if you're gonna show up for your next classes. So to save headache and stress for clients, they just remove your next classes to be on the safe side. So if you do want to keep those classes, I do urge you to go under tutor chat and contact the schedulers as soon as possible to ask them to not remove them. But ultimately, try to avoid the red dot because that is obviously going to cost you. 
Okay, so that's my session page. That's the important parts there. Um, so for now, I'm going to click out of that. You will end up with a lot of tabs open when you're working with iTutor Group because everything tends to open in a new tab or a window. Okay, so that was the My Session page. Now we're going to go to the Weekly Session Booking. This one is another hugely super important page for us because there is a lot of information here that you'll want to know. Okay, so when it comes up, you'll see a lot of things. We'll start at the very top. So up here at the top, it will say what you're qualified for. Everyone starting at iTutor is qualified to teach junior sessions and adult sessions. The only box that you will see ticked is junior sessions. You'll notice there is not a box for adult sessions. Literally everyone working for iTutor Group will teach adults. There is no way out of it. Um, if you did choose to teach adults only, you may not have the junior sessions box ticked and that's fine because um, obviously you're only teaching adults. Um, the other part I will let you know about here, a lot of people ask this question, you'll see OUP junior sessions. So OUP is just a different curriculum offered by iTutor Group. It's Oxford University Press, um, and it is, it's just a different set of lessons. There's nothing particularly special about them. Um, they're just a different set of classes that our juniors or our kids can take. Um, so you will usually not see this box tick, but new teachers are getting OUP classes. So don't freak out if you see them on your schedule. There's nothing different to them. Just review the material and teach the class like any other. Okay, so we'll come down here to have a bit of a look at the schedule first. So you can view your schedule for up to five weeks out. In this case, we'll stay on the current week. Um, so it's good that I've got my schedule here because I can show you a few things. So you'll see a set of letters up here at the top. So M, you'll see M's on the schedule. Those refer to my prime time. And what that is, those are the hours that you've chosen to work as your fixed schedule. Like when you start, you do have to pick 10 peak hours as your fixed weekly schedule. Those will be designated by M's on your calendar. One important thing to note on our schedule is that these are all hour blocks and they do start on the half hour. So when you see 1.30, that's referring to 1.30 to 2 and 2 to 2.30 or 1.30 to 2.30. Um, so do keep that in mind when you're booking classes that you are typically booking hour spots unless you actually go in and make sure you book half an hour, which I'll show you in a second. Um, okay, another important letter that you need to know here is the A. So when you do cancel your fixed hours, in this case I did just take a couple days off, so you will see an A next to those indicating that your cancellation has been approved and those hours will no longer be booked. I highly recommend if you cancel any hours that you come to this page immediately following and make sure that you do in fact see an A next to every hour that you intended to cancel. I get a lot of t new teachers with absences because they've missed a half hour or they've missed a time zone conversion and they failed to check this page to make sure that things were canceled properly. So again, when you cancel, always pop over to this page, make sure that you're seeing A's next to your M's, okay? Um, when you've submitted a cancellation request, normally it only takes a few minutes to approve. Once it does, you'll see the A. If you happen to come to this page and it's not quite approved yet, you will see a P there, just meaning that it's pending. Um, if for some reason your request is not approved, you will get an R. Um, now, I've never had a request rejected except for when I did not put a reason in for canceling. So I think as long as you put a reason in for your cancellation, it will get approved. If for some reason it is rejected, just resubmit it with a reason or a different reason and it will get approved. Okay, the other things that you'll tend to see, another big one that I get asked about are the little hearts and you will see those on my schedule down here in the corners of some hours. That just means that a student that I have taught has enjoyed my classes and has selected me as one of their favorite teachers. Uh, meaning if I happen to open those hours, there's a good chance that I'll have those students again as potential regular students. So it is possible to get repeat students with iTutor Group. Okay, so that's the main things about this page as far as what you'll actually see on your schedule. Now we'll show you something. Um, if you click an hour, you'll get a little tick mark there. I just clicked a random one. If I wanted to book that hour, say I wanted to work at 5.30 in the morning on Wednesday, you'll see a little box over here on the side. So you tick whatever hours you want. In this case, I'll tick those two. And over here on the side, you'll come up and you'll see the half hour increments. 
if, for example, I decided ah, 530 is a bit too early, I don't really want to work that one. I could just click over here next to that, get rid of it, and I'll only be doing an hour and a half. So if you do want to book half hour spots, you can go in, just get rid of half hours, and you'll see there it changes on my schedule to you see two half hour spots open. Um, and then I click Submit Schedule, it'll do its magic. You'll see a little success box pop up there on the right hand corner. And I'm now booked in for those two half hour spots. If I'm like, oh, oh no, I've made a mistake. I don't actually want to get up that early on Wednesday. I can simply click that box. It'll come up and say, do you confirm canceling? Yes, of course I do. I do not want to get up that early on Wednesday. That's my day off. And you just can cancel both of those bookings and you will get the little success can canceled successfully. And you won't have those tick marks on your schedule anymore. Super easy. Um, so you can open as many hours as you want. So I can literally go through and tick every single box on this page. There's no limits. Um, and you can, can plan your schedule quite far out. So I could plan clean through the middle of December if I wanted to. Um, you'll notice here that boxes begin to get grayed out. That's because you do need to book hours or open hours four hours in advance. Um, so for me, it's 6 p.m. right now, so if I did decide I wanted to work at 10.30 tonight, I could still make that decision and open that time spot, and I would still get booked more than likely. Okay, so just keep in mind that when you are planning your schedule to do that as far out as you can, obviously, but four hours is your limit. The last thing I will show you on this page Actually, there's two things. I take that back. I get asked this question a lot. Um, you'll see up here where you see this little points system. It means absolutely nothing. So just ignore that. Um, it is an antiquated thing that was around even before I began a while back. So I believe it was from an old promotion that they were doing and they've just never taken it away. So just ignore the point system. It means absolutely nothing for you. Okay, now what I was actually going to show you is the edit my prime time. That's the blue button up here that you see me highlighting. If you click that, now I'm not actually going to change my schedule, but I did just want to show you that this is where you'd want to go if you do want to change your fixed hours. Um, now when you do set a fixed hour schedule, so the 10 peak hours that you have to have, you do need to keep those hours for 30 days. Um, so you can only change your schedule essentially once a month. Um, but if you did want to put in an application to change your hours, you just need to go up here, click new, and it'll let you actually adjust your hours. Do remember that with your 10 peak hours, you do have to keep four hours on the weekends. Um, and you do need to stick to the peak hours. So you couldn't just come up here and book off peak hours as your fixed hours. They will reject it if you do that. Okay, I'm not going to change my hours, so I'm just going to go back to the other page. And that is your weekly session booking page. Super important page. Do stay on top of this. You can't see when your classes book on this page. You can only open and close your schedule here. So you do need to use this page in conjunction with the My Session page. Another super important one is the session cancellation page. You'll notice again, we're getting quite a few tabs open up here. So I'll just close that one. Um, now you did notice on my schedule, I did put in some cancellations. So this is where you come to do that is fourth one down session cancellation under the consultant tab. Okay, so this is will show you all the cancellations you've done at a particular period. Um, so in my case, you had seen the A's on my schedule. Those were approved. You do see a rejected one down here. That was one that I accidentally put in by accident and I didn't give a reason. So it was rejected, um, but it was irrelevant because I didn't mean to do it. Um, now, one thing I'll show you while we're here, if you have put in a cancellation request, say for example, I have canceled here. If I changed my mind and decided, yep, I do actually want to work tomorrow for this hour, I can simply hit cancel and that will reopen up that hour. So you can undo cancellation requests once you make them. Okay, now the important part. So this is just your history of cancellations and where you can see whether they've been approved. If you do want to cancel hours, you can simply come in here, put in your reason. So it could be anything. Honestly, I usually put scheduling conflict. Thank you. Um, and then you need to decide whether it's urgent or future. So at the bottom, if it's urgent, it's typically coming up within the next 24 to 48 hours. If it is, if it does need to be urgent, you will see them down here and there'll be tick boxes. So you just go through, tick the hours that you don't want to work and click submit. Um, if you're doing farther out, which I do recommend doing if possible, you just go to future. You put in the dates that you need here and the times. Okay, a couple things to note here. You do need to put things in Taipei time or Beijing time, 
however you think about it. Um, so do not put times in your local time zone. So if you go back to the, uh, the scheduling page, you can hover over your fixed hours. I'll actually do that to show you on this page. So say for instance, I wanted to cancel next Saturday. If you hover over that, it'll actually tell you local time, which for me is 1.30 in the morning, and it'll tell you Taipei time, which in that case is 8.30 in the morning for them. So if you do need help converting, you can just simply come back to this page and hover over and jot them down. Okay, so do make sure when you're putting in times, put in your Taipei times. And when you're putting in your booking times, say for instance in my case, if I were gonna scroll down and cancel the 8.30, uh, so say I just wanted to cancel the 8.30, um, I would actually just go in and I would put 8.30 for both time slots. When it's asking you for the session, for the first booking and the last booking, it's asking you for the start times of those sessions. So I want to cancel the session starting at 8.30. And that's also the last session I want to cancel. So if I put that through, I would click Submit Future Cancellation. It will come up and ask me if I'm sure. I will say yes. And then it will come back to this page and show me that it's pending. Okay, um, so do be very careful when you do this. Um, you don't get in trouble for submitting cancellations, but you do always want to check um, both on this page, and I highly recommend checking on this page just because I'm a visual person, that you do have those A's showing up to ensure that they are canceled. Okay, so that's the cancellation system. The next thing down on your list, so the fifth item down under the consultant tab, is your feedback report. Okay, um, so I haven't actually taught this month because I've had a couple of weeks off, but what you normally see here is your ratings for the period of the month. So we're up to 11 days, so I would have 11 days worth of ratings showing here. Um, I'll see if I can go back and I'll just pick a random, oh, that's, that's, that's a year. Let's go back forward. <laughs> go back to pick a random day. So I just picked a random week. If you click that, it'll give you an idea of what you can actually see. So you'll see how many tens you've gotten, how many nines you've gotten, how many people have not completed feedback. It'll give you your average and your average over the last 50 sessions. Um, so you can view a week at a time. And then when you do that, like that's why I just selected a week in August. If you come down here, you can see actually what students gave you feedback and what they had to say about you. Um, so you can see all the little tags they've given you, what they liked or didn't like about your class while they gave you that rating. Um, so I do recommend having a look at this. Um, it's a good point for self-reflection and kind of seeing how you're going in your classes. Um, but this is a super important page because you do need to keep your rating above a nine for iTutor Group. So do keep a check on this page. Don't overthink it and don't freak out about ratings. They are important, but teach every class amazingly and you'll be fine, okay? Um, but this is important, so you do have the ability to check your ratings. So again, if you did want to see your ratings, you just come in here, select whatever week you want to look at, hit search, and again, you'll see the ratings that you've gotten for that particular week. And you'll see what students left you the rating and what they had to say about you. Okay, so that's the feedback report. I will click this. You don't really need to know it, but submit material. It's completely irrelevant. Feel free to click it and have a look, but you'll never need to do this. Um, the next one down, Comp Center. This one is also important. It will open up another window again. Almost there, it's loading. So the comm center is essentially what you use to communicate with iTutor Group. So here you can submit requests or communications to different departments if you run into any problems. You can obviously always contact your recruiter or your interviewer if you need to with questions, and usually that's the quickest way. Um, also, using Tutor Chat is super quick as well because that usually connects you directly with a person, whereas the Comm Center can take a little while because they route it to the correct department and it takes a little while for people to get back to you. But you can just click Contact Us and it'll bring this up. You can choose your department that you want to talk to, so scheduling, payroll, recruiting, da, 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 all these different things. Um, so you can just click those, write your message to them. If you have something that you want to submit to them, you can do it there and you just submit it and they'll get back to you. So that one is quite important. Um, another one that's important, my payroll. So that one is nearly at the bottom there of the consultant tab. So that will bring up your payroll. One huge question that I always get about payroll is why is my payroll not updating? 
So a couple things. Um, one, when you come to payroll, it is automatically default to the first month of the year. Um, so obviously it is now November. Um, I'm just gonna we'll click another month. So let's click there. So when you click on whatever month you want to check, it will bring up your pay for that month. It'll tell you the pay date for that month and it'll tell you everything you've earned. So you'll be able to see your base pay, any bonuses that you've gotten, any penalties. So if you have missed a class, you will be penalized um, and it'll show you the total that you're expected for the month. Um, so you can view your 25 minute sessions and your 40 or 45 minute sessions. Okay, so do make sure you change to the current month when you want to look at your pay. The other important thing to note is do not panic if you finish teaching a class and pop over to payroll page and it hasn't updated. The payroll page, it's written up here at the top, will be updated four times a day. Um, so it does, inter it does update at different intervals, obviously Beijing time. So I advise waiting a few hours before you actually check payroll. Otherwise, you're just going to freak out because it's not there. Um, so do keep in mind, it, it is not an immediate update system. It does update at different intervals. The other very key thing I will tell you about this is that particularly at the very end of the month, so the last couple days of a month and the first couple days of the next month, your payroll page may glitch. It may not show exactly what you think it should. There may be something off about it. Do not panic. Um, obviously, at the end of the month, the beginning of the next month is when they are processing payroll. Um, so as things are changing and being processed, you may see your numbers kind of fluctuate a little bit. Um, don't stress about it. Just keep a check on it, and it usually clears itself up in a couple days. Okay. The last thing I will show you is the attendance system. Hopefully, you don't have to use this system, um, but it is very important to know. So remember how earlier I did mention that if you get switched, it will count against you. So if you get switched, it is an absence most often, and it will show up here. So it'll show you what session you've missed, it will tell you whether it was a valid absence, and it'll give you the option to appeal it. So if you missed a class an hour ago, you'll see it pop up here, it will say valid, and it will ask you if you want to appeal. There is a user guide up here I recommend you have a look at, and it talks you through appealing and something we have called free passes. So you get free passes for things like IT issues, personal issues, and you do have a set number of these each month and throughout the duration of your contract. Um, so if you're going to appeal something, make sure you do have a good reason. So if you just switch from your class because you didn't quite get there in three minutes, don't just click appeal and hope it's going to go through because it's not. You have to have a good reason to have an appeal. Um, so you need to have something to support your case. So, you know, if you've spoken to a scheduler and it was a mistake on their end, screenshot it and use that as your appeal. Don't just come in, click appeal and hope they're going to approve it for you. Um, if you are switched, I recommend maybe using a free pass to get past that, um, but don't just click appeal and hope for the best because you're kind of wasting your effort. Um, but you do have your free passes to use and that will eliminate absences for you. Um, so this is where you come to fight absences essentially. Okay, so that covers everything under the consultant tab. And that is where the bulk of all of your important teaching life is concerned. Okay, so you can find everything you need there. Um, another one I'll show you is training. Um, so onboarding instructions you should be quite familiar with. Coming in as a new teacher, you've just, just done your onboarding, but there are lots of things in here to have a look at as well. So you'll see training portal. I recommend coming in here and having a bit of a look. There are lots of training resources with iTutor Group. So you will see there are lots of different things that you can have a look at to be trained on. So OUP, demos, different things about speaking opportunity, lots of little bits and pieces. Okay, there's also consultant live sessions. So we're actually going to skip down to the fourth option. And I do recommend, particularly if you're a new consultant or new to online teaching, definitely come to this tab and have a bit of a look. Um, iTutor Group has lots of great trainers that put on these sessions. Um, and there's topics from everything on teaching adults to TPR to, you know, speaking opportunity to... Oh, you name it, you can scroll down this list for days. So there's lots of things that you can do, and they're all hour sessions. You don't have to do anything. You just reserve, show up, 
you know, you don't need to do a lot as far as participating. You have someone there that's, you know, walking you through different things that could help you with your teaching. Um, and these are all free, so feel free to jump in if one fits your schedule and they could be quite helpful for you. It's a great resource provided by the company that, you know, is there to help you. Um, now, otherwise, you can kind of have a play with stuff in the training tab, but I will show you one more thing as a new consultant that I think it's important to know is you can actually go, so I'll show you what I just clicked on, practice room. I get asked this all the time by new teachers. Ah, there we go. Um, is, you know, do I get a chance to practice before I actually have to teach? Um, so yes and no. Like there's no practice classes. There's no more mock classes. There's none of that. But what you can do is go to the practice room. So this will give you a chance to actually go into the classroom, find out where all the buttons are, see what the layout looks like, and you know have a bit of a play so that when you do go into your first class, you're not fumbling around trying to figure out where stuff is. Um, there are three different classrooms. Uh, Tutor Meet is our older version. You will get this on the very rare occasion that a student hasn't updated. Um, so do have a look at that one. The other one is a dynamic room. This is for our interactive lessons. Um, so both of those are fairly uncommon, but you may get them depending on what you're teaching. So I do recommend having a look at both. I'm just going to show you the middle one, Tutor Meet Plus, because that is our most common classroom. There you go. So when you click into that, you actually get to see what it's going to look like when you're teaching. Okay, so I'll turn those on so you can have a bit of a look at my setup and you can see me. Ah, hello. Um, so you can have a bit of a play. So I changed the camera by moving this little line over here. Um, so you can see me up here. Um, I don't want to see myself anymore, so we'll turn that off and you'll just get to see my picture. So you can turn your video or microphone off and on as you want to. So you'll see those buttons there. Just click that Pew! microphone. Webcam. So you can turn those off and on as you need to. Um, you will see a little button here that says help me. That's how you contact IT support in the classroom. And you'll see a list there. If I did have a student in the classroom, that would be down here below, so I'd be able to see their video or their microphone down there below me. There's a chat box that's the other option there, so if I did want to send a message to students, I can do so there. Um, now we'll show you something real quick. When the countdown timer hits the start time of the class, it will come up and tell you that you have to turn things on because class is starting. And you'll notice there is no longer a begin session button because the session has begun. Okay, I'm going to turn those back off for the purpose of this. So I do recommend coming in here and having a bit of a play. There is an icon up here. You'll see it. It looks like a little information icon, an eye with a circle. If you click that, it actually shows you what everything does. So it's pretty much telling you what I've kind of already started telling you. It tells you all the little tools, where to find different things. So I can probably walk you through this, but in honesty, I think it's just better if you come in and have a bit of a play. Um, so one important one that you'll need to know is the pencil. We have highlighters. You can change the colors for all these things. You can draw lines. You can draw arrows. You can draw circles. You can erase everything if you want to. Uh, you also have the trash can, which clears everything. It'll ask if you want to clear everything. Um, you can change the page up here at the top. If you wanted to add material, you can do that here. It says add image, add blank page. Da, da, da. So you have lots of options. Um, and again, this there is a PowerPoint in here that actually tells you all the little bits and pieces too. So take advantage of that too, because it will actually show you how to use this platform. So feel free to come in here, play around. I recommend spending you know 10, 15 minutes in here, finding where everything is and how to use it and what would work best with your teaching style. Um, when a class is finished, you just click end session and it'll close the page for you. Okay, I'm not going to go into the other ones. You can have a bit of a play with those yourself. Um, so that's pretty much the training tab. You can have a look at the few little other bits and pieces in there. Um, another important one is frequently asked questions I'll take you to quickly. So there is lots of information under this tab. So a few little things about you know, questions that the company often gets asked. Um, some of these are relevant, some of these are not. So just have a look in here. If you do have a question, it's a good starting point, at least, to potentially getting that question answered. Okay, the very last place I'm going to take you to is Management tab. So that is your fourth tab across. And I'll show you this one because I get this question a lot. So if you click Profile, which is the first option there, 
Here's where you can go in and change your profile information if you want to. I'll scroll down quickly to the bottom. You can update your photos, your bio, or your videos here by clicking edit, okay? The other one is your bank information. So I'm not going to click this one because I don't particularly want to show you my bank information. But if you go here, you can update your banking information as much as you need. Do make sure you've updated this information by the 25th of each month, as it does need to be updated then for it to affect the next payroll, because um, it does take a few days to typically get that information approved. Last thing I will show you is your service agreement. So that was the third option down there. So management, service agreement, and that will actually bring up your contract. If you have any questions about your pay, policies, that is where you go to reread your contract and see what is in that. Okay. So I believe that is pretty much everything in the portal. So if you have questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to me and I'm happy to help. Um, hopefully this has been helpful as I do get a lot of questions about things in the portal. And hopefully this walkthrough has kind of shown you how to do different things.